<laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, that was a tough topic to follow. We've been very esoteric this morning, very scientific, which is uh, what you're all here for. Uh, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is my talk is very short. The bad news is I'm a lawyer. So the first question that you're going to ask is, why am I here? Well, before we get to that, uh, we might want to consider why we're all here. And we're all here, obviously, because we want to live forever. We want to be healthy. Uh, and I think we want to make the world a better place. So the question is, how do we do that? And I was at the conference last year uh, with my wife, and, and we paid attention and listened. And what we heard was people talking about the paleo template. Uh, the common refrain was, how do we get the message out there? We're here, we're a small group, uh, we blog, we publish articles, we write books, uh, we do research, we form groups, uh, we work on the internet, we do all these things, and what effect, if any, are they having? Well, the group is larger than it was last year, but I don't know that even with all these activities, we can say that it is yet fully mainstream. So the question is, how does it get out there? Before we figure that out, we got to figure out, well, what are the opposing factors? What is the opposition? And it is substantial. You follow the money. It's the establishment. Okay? It's corporations who are vested in the status quo. Monsanto, Cargill, Archer Daniel Midland, General Mills, Coca-Cola. They all contribute toward and support the politician. And, of course, both those groups uh, are close to the media. You have the commercials going over. You have the politicians writing the law that regulates that. Uh, you have the television commercials that talk about the heart-healthy cereal. Uh, you have the research uh, from the corporations, starting with Ansel Keys. Uh, and, and going through the modern day. Uh, you have the politicians with their farm subsidies, uh, the GMOs, the corn, the soy, the sugar beets, and then, of course, the, uh, the, uh, the supporting of all this, uh, you have the Dr. Oz's of the world who offend no one. So the question is, what can we, what can this group, uh, do? And, my perception is that to get the attention, you have to somehow do something that has an economic impact beyond the petitions, beyond the blog, uh, beyond the market. And what is that? It's litigate. Sue the bastard. So, now that's very nice in theory, but how do you do it? These are pretty big corporations. Well, you start on a focused uh, uh, concept. And then you expand. So here we have a lawsuit filed in June of this year in the Western District of New York uh, in Buffalo. A parent natural guardian of an infant, a 14-year-old girl, who developed type 2 diabetes uh, when she was 12 years old. And I have a nationally renowned expert, one of your group, uh, who has to be unnamed for now. Uh, who has looked at her medical records, who's looked at her food history, and is willing to say that her consumption of high fructose corn syrup is a cause or a contributing factor to her development of type 2 diabetes. So I've sued Archer Daniel Midland, uh, Cargill, Tate and Lyle, uh, and a couple of others. Why did I try and focus on high fructose corn syrup? Well, first of all, it is a totally man-made product. And we're talking in this realm, we're talking about product liability and failure to warn. Uh, you can't get high fructose corn syrup unless the corn manufacturers make it. So you've got a product. When you make a product, then you have to attach warning to it, assuming that it causes or contributes to harm. Uh, 
chosen infant, somebody under 21, because there is the statute of limitations and product liability where I come from is three years. So you could have a 45 year old guy and he could sue for the same thing and the companies would say, hey, even if we're wrong, we'll pay you for the last three years, 42 to 45, but uh, what about the previous 42 years? We're not responsible for that. With an infant, you get her whole life. Spent. Secondly, the defense always is, and we hear this every day, if you want to lose weight, exercise, and eat less. That is the defense. It's your fault. You eat too much. Well, how do you tell that to a five-year-old? They're like Labrador Retriever. You put something in front of them that they like, they're going to eat it. So you get rid of the defenses of uh, comparative negligence. You get rid of the statute of limitations. Uh, you have the national expert. And ultimately, after uh, uh, the scorched earth defense, which will take three to five years, uh, you will have uh, an opportunity to get in front of a jury. And then we'll see what happens. And that will be a jury of, of peers. And they'll make the decision as to whether they think that this particular substance contributed to. And it could only be 20 or 30 percent. It only has to be a substantial factor, a contributing cause. And that doesn't have to be the sole cause. If I, if we work together, and if these, this type of lawsuit and these type of lawsuits gain traction, well, the high fructose people are going to, well, they'll change the product. It'll become... Uh, uh, corn, uh, sugar, corn sugar, corn starch, uh, they'll modify it, but the high fructose may, uh, uh, diminish in our society, which I think would probably be a pretty good, uh, pretty good thing. So what can we do? Uh, we can work together, which is what you all have been talking about. Uh, the, uh, Journal of Evolution and the Health that is just coming out is a great idea. Uh, the communications, I had trouble. I mean, I know you all have blogs, and we can tune into the blogs, and we can talk on it, uh, but I don't know how much uh, uh, actual communication there is there. I think that more uh, uh, would be beneficial. Even doctors and lawyers, uh, which some would, could work together, which some might define as an oxymoron. Uh, we can work for a common purpose, we can form the groups, Lincoln, uh, Google Plus, Listserv. Uh, this is something that can be done in addition to the petitions and the blogging where you actually may have an impact. So I was asked uh, to speak just to simply tell you this is something positive and concrete that is happening. I'm doing it. Uh, I am very available and accessible. Uh, you can talk to me here. Contact me uh, in my office or on the web. Uh, I think this is a positive uh, uh, effort, and I look forward to learning from you guys. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be trying to do this. Thank you very much.